Hey folks, uh, Christmas Day 2022, Ksenia Mebrigilovsky, and this is just uh, another video cut um, while I'm pondering and thinking about it, I'm deciding to document it as I move along my days of solitude here in Canada, All right? So I apologize in advance for my English, you've probably uh, viewed some of my videos if not this is your first video i apologize in advance for my uh, poor to average english of uh, an immigrant i can i still consider myself having a heavy accent this is partially due to me having no social circle um, no friends uh, no relatives that would speak uh, english i've only been communicating in english um, on the job in the various workplaces, 10, 12 workplaces that I've been through in the past 16 plus years. So bear with me. Thank you. Anyway, so this is my story uh, again as I am here uh, all by myself uh, at my residence at 106 Montcalm Boulevard in Vaughan, Ontario. Uh, divorced now two years. Um, Again, I'm unemployed for more than a year now. I'm denied employment. I've been I've been denied employment and fair income earning opportunities since forever since ever I immigrated to Canada in 2006. Um, I was born in Tashkent, uh, Uz SSR. At that time, it was USSR in 1984. In uh, 1991, when it all collapsed, it uh, became an independent republic of Uzbekistan. Uh, you may explore geography, etc. So I found myself in uh, um, primarily Asian slash Middle Eastern state. So you now know where Uzbekistan is, and you can imagine the state of affairs there. Okay. So I am going to reiterate the fact that. I am Slavic, I am white, um, I, I may have 5%, 7% of Asian blood in me, but I am Slavic and white, all right? So, um, I've, uh, I am still struggling, it's my 16th, 17th year in Canada, I'm still struggling to find doctors, to find fair income earning opportunities, um, my ex Spouse was an XXY, uh, slightly on a spectrum. Uh, you can look it up and find out for yourself. Um, anyway, I had a very low expectation and low uh, threshold for um, mating and potential mates because when I was growing up in Uzbekistan, I was uh, nowhere near the average uh, uh, female, you can imagine most of them were uh, much more fragile, smaller, tinier, and I was uh, size, oh, I was bigger than an average male, right, in Uzbekistan. So it was always difficult for me to um, even think about romantic encounters. Uh, primarily because of my socioeconomic uh, factors, uh, my family status, as well as uh, my genetic and physical factors, of course. Uh, I'm not going to go too far into it. Uh, you can imagine what it was after 1991 when the Soviets collapsed. Uh, essentially, it was uh, anarchy, corruption, etc., etc. Uh, not fun. We had homeless people, we had uh, drug addicts, uh, even in the center of the uh, capital city, right, when I was growing up. So me going to dance recitals and from dance recitals all by myself since I was eight, nine years old. Um, it was normal for me to kind of look behind my shoulder, etc. And not to go into... A flood of stairs when uh, my intuition would tell me that there was someone and I might find myself, uh, you know, fighting a drug addict or finding a frozen homeless person, right? So I would go somewhere else to stay uh, for n number of hours until either my mother or her now spouse would uh, uh, come by in the evening and I would be able to safely enter the 
apartment, all right? So, like, you can watch the movies. You've probably watched the movies of people growing up and uh, living in countries outside of North America where you have kids driving your school buses, etc. okay? And parents helicoptering them around, etc., etc. Uh, wasn't the case with me whatsoever, all right? Whatsoever. Um, I was more than occupied with the, the studies and the extracurricular activities and finding myself uh, in safe situations uh, at all times, which was hard to come by um, at times, especially between 1991 and about 2000, uh, when I finally got employed and was able to um, support myself and sort of like I was already bigger and uh, more mature in terms of uh, street life, etc. Um, I want to reiterate the fact that um, I never did drugs, I never took pills, I never, um, I never encountered like partying situation where I would find myself uh, dozed off, or I never had loss of memory, etc. Uh, I smoked for about six months to eight months in grade 10 or so, uh, but that was a, a hype at the time and it was a passing sort of uh, uh, trial and error for me. So that was a high stress situation when I was kind of growing up in my teen years. Um, anyway, it was, it was the semester that I was kind of smoking, even though I knew that I had tonsils removed and uh, my essentially respiratory system was uh, at risk as is, all right? Uh, at that time in Tashkent, everything that I'm talking about right now, everything, I'm pretty sure the people who uh, lured us into Canada, who brought us into Canada to either pawn us around or... Uh, somehow set up, set us up so that they can monitor and track uh, whatever transactions, operations, and people they had in mind. All right. So I want to reiterate the fact that I was um, lured. I was effectively lured into Canada. I fall as a dependent of my mother and her spouse. They immigrated as professional uh, visa application enters in 2006. They are both engineers by um, uh, academic, uh, from an academic perspective as well as uh, professionally. So I followed them, although at that time I only had um, minimal conversational English. I could understand, I could read, etc., but I could interact in English minimally. Uh, I had heavy accent and so I didn't have any friends here um, who would be able to engage with me in English uh, to sort of bring me up to speed. So as soon as I immigrated in 2006, I had to go to school, to high school, to learn English. Okay, so I went to high school. I worked in meaningless jobs, absolutely meaningless jobs. And I'm not talking about uh, meaningless Canadian jobs. I'm talking about ghetto jobs, ghetto. Verging and edging on the criminality, okay? Because, like, again, I don't have any experience. <coughs> I didn't have any experience. I didn't have any social connections. I didn't, my English was poor, so... My earning capabilities were very restricted at that time. So 2006 to about 2010, I was like barely making anything. Uh, going to school, I was, uh, so I finished my in, uh, advanced English. Uh, I did, I did uh, college for a number of years. I, I tried certified uh, accounting designation. Although I understood at uh, some point that um, this accounting designation would give me more pain than uh, I would get out of it. Because as I know now, as an immigrant from Uzbekistan, 
with uh, the history and uh, like the collapse, the pre-collapse and post-collapse with my family history. Uh, I had some, uh, so I worked for a non-government organization, Jewish non-government organization back in uh, uh, Tashkent since I was 15, right? So I finished school at 16 and I uh, started uh, working in high school still when 15. Uh, up until uh, we left in 2006. So I worked in that non-government organization for Jewish agencies across um, post-Soviet countries. Right? So I traveled extensively. I, I spoke Hebrew, I spoke Russian, I spoke German. Uh, so I was teaching Hebrew. Okay, So that was my uh, job. I was teaching Hebrew to uh, adults who were looking to immigrate to Israel. Okay, I had some relatives in Israel. Uh, my grand-grandmother was uh, there, and her sister's uh, line of descendants uh, was also there. Um, I, I did not follow that because of some uh, family uh, manifestations that I didn't find uh, advantageous or favorable to me, so I followed my mother and her spouse into Canada. Right, people uh, who lured me, effectively lured them, and then lured me uh, by proxy, uh, and as a consequence, uh, knew full well uh, the state we were in. My biological father left in '87 uh, when I was barely three; I was not even three at that time. All right, so he left. Uh, he engaged with some whatever. Uh, more prospective bride to be, uh, who bear, who bore him two sons. Uh, the relationship started even before he uh, ended the relationship with my mother. Okay, so it was. Uh, I'm not going to talk about her story right now. Her story is uh, much more complex and difficult and um, intricate from psychological point of view. Uh, I am not gonna take her perspective right now, although I can I can wear the hat and that hat is uh, quite heavy at times. Uh, I'm gonna talk from my point of view and from my perspective only. So in 1987 when uh, he left and uh, he subsequently immigrated to Russia um, where he set up his family with uh, his uh, more prospective bride, two sons, etc., etc. Uh, I was not welcome. I visited them um, in Moscow in 19, 1989, if I'm not mistaken, 88 or 89. Uh, I do not have good memories from that time, although my memory is uh, sporadic and not consistent from years of 87 to 1990. Um, I, I, the, the only thing I remember is that the sense of uh, danger and unsafety, so to speak, and uh, I did not follow them. I did not visit. I did not see him, actually, uh, ever since. Uh, he called me on my birthdays once a year with the smooth voice, uh, a pacifying voice, uh, whispering something in uh, um, a receiver at the time when my mother and I was trying to cope with the daily lives of uh, a, a divorced female with a daughter to raise, okay, in Uzbekistan, uh, Tashkent. Uh, in that whatever apartment building that we were uh, residing in. Uh, our flat of stairs was the corner one, the very corner uh, that was uh, exposed to the, like, kind of like a, a side street. And uh, there were uh, uh, a series of garage, uh, garages, uh, outside garages, or parking cars. Anyway, um, what can I tell you? Growing up there was not like you can compare growing up there in the 90s to growing up anywhere in Europe or let alone North America. Okay. 
So I'm coming here, I'm going through this constant studies, studies after studies after studies. Um, but my mother and her spouse, her spouse is uh, uh, Jewish and he's not an Ashkenazi Jew. He is a, a Bukhari, like, so there are different types of Jewish folks, okay? Um, my line, I'm 12% Ashkenazi Jew, 12%, the rest is Slavic, okay? 5% uh, some Asian, 12% Ashkenazi Jew, the rest is uh, Slavic, Russian, Ukrainian, whatever, uh, European, general, broad European uh, ancestry. Uh, so he is a uh, Bukhari Jew, so he's dark. He doesn't look like me whatsoever. He only visited us uh, sporadically, twice or three times a week, at, sometimes twice a week, most, most on most weeks. All right. He was not involved in uh, bringing me up. He was not involved in my daily life at school, my studies, my uh, extracurricular activities. Yes, we went to. Um, the swimming pool sometimes where he would swim because he was um, uh, some paddler or canoe uh, athlete when he was in university, when he was younger. So he thought highly of his swimming abilities, whatever. Uh, all I can say is that uh, my performance in school, uh, picking me up and uh, uh, taking me home, uh, making sure that I am uh, entering the flood of stairs. This flood of stairs is uh, forever etched into my memory, okay, with all the homeless people and uh, drug addicts in the uh, early and mid-90s when this whole state of affairs uh, was very unsettled and disorganized, when uh, folks were just, like, unemployed and uh, the uh, organized crime was rampant. Um, so my daily safety, my performance at school, my daily activities, how I was doing psychologically, none of that was taken care of by no one, okay? So I just want to reiterate the fact that I was growing as I was growing, as the grass is growing outside, okay? In a non very ma very well manicured lawns, all right? Or like in the park, most likely. Or in the forest, actually. <laughs> so whatever... Um, thresholds or whatever sort of um, requirements my mother was setting for herself or her life was by no means indication of what I was looking and accepting in my life, right? I was growing up very much on my own as a my own person and independently, right? Yes, we did uh, go to um, quarterly shopping activities together just to sort of bond, etc. And I was going to uh, those swimming competitions with Michael just to showcase how great he was at swimming, etc. Um, I cannot tell that I've I am a great daughter, okay? I cannot tell that I am superly uh, empathetic. I'm not a caring person by, by no means. I am very competitive and I am, I am for myself and by myself, okay? Um, so the people who brought me here knew very well what kind of environment I was coming from, we knew very well the state of our uh, uh, apartment building uh, I was coming from when the water was in the uh, basement and we had mosquitoes flying all over. I had to uh, fend off with towels and uh, uh, polyurethane the, the cracks and uh, uh, clog and clog the toilets, etc., etc. So I, I had to do all this. Like you knew it very well. You knew very well what condition I was coming in. That I only had one boyfriend that you set up for me, Mr. Sergey Kamilov, who <coughs> didn't care for me whatsoever. Don't delude yourself. I didn't delude myself. He couldn't care less for me. He was after my money and after whatever job he had to do to spy on me as a security counsel. 
okay, to hack my phone and uh, see where I'm going, what people I'm talking to, etc., etc., to uh, assess my personality before entry to Canada, okay? So he knocked me out when I was a virgin and I, at 19 in 2004, all right? So he was helicoptering me, helicoptering me, my expectations of the other gender, of the other sex, the male gender was uh, non-existent, okay? So all the males that I, uh, all the sort of men in my mother's life and all the men in my, at my school and everyone who I encountered was shit, just brown, stinking, foul shit. Right? So my expectation was, okay, fine, I'm going to try dating. All right? So I dated this uh, security guard that you guys set up for me for, uh, what, May 2004 to uh, November uh, 2005. So for, uh, give or take 18 months, okay? Um, with me actually being away for seminars during the summer. Um, I want to emphasize I was always exclusive with the th uh, three sexual partners that I had, Mr. Sergei Kamilov, then the 90-minute uh, sex stint with uh, uh, Alexander Filimonov, who you set up for me once again, and who you, whose identity you took on to interact with me later on, years on, uh, in what, so seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, you can check my inbox dot through. It wasn't him. It wasn't him interacting with me. All right. So you took on his identity. And then there was my ex spouse, ex ex y uh, Buchen Golds who was uh, falling apart, falling apart, not only XXY, which was all right by me because I was uh, not necessarily looking to have children right off the bat, uh, like growing up in the condition I was growing up and how I was growing up and entering Canada the way I was entering and getting the jobs, the, the kind of jobs that I was getting, I, was, I didn't have a thought about children, okay? So you gave me this uh, spouse, a maid that was falling apart, uh, who as a person is not necessarily bad, but I mean, you watched him say, why don't we just live together for the fuck of it without sex, just as roommates, okay? So that's the kind of commitment he was looking for. You knew full well about my expectations and my uh, sort of um, uh, savvy in uh, detached houses. So you gave us, as immigrants, I'm pretty sure, and I'm pretty sure as immigrants and as a, you know, access to on a spectrum husband and maybe on a spectrum wife, you gave us a house with no inspection, fully decorated, ready to move in, which was a factor for me at that time because I didn't have no money nor time to decorate and uh, sort of like do all the things to set it up and organize. I was working full-time and studying part-time and so did Alex at that time. All right, so <coughs> I'm pretty sure you gave us a leftover or a, a somehow substandard house and charge us a thick margin on it, okay? So once again, I want to reiterate, you not only fucked me up on health, on my sexuality, on my psychology for the past 16 years, you fucked me up on employment opportunities, on social circle, you've destroyed my life. You knew full, full well that my mother entertain an idea of leaving me back in Uzbekistan with Sergei Kamilov if I was prepared to uh, stay with him, marry him, have children. He intentionally damaged the condom uh, from one perspective, and I think the perspective he had in mind is he wanted to get rid of me, which I did. I didn't have any intention on setting up a family and having kids with the dude, right? I, I I don't, think, I don't think he loves his mother. 
I don't think he loved his uh, 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 brother from another father, okay? And I think he is... You know how he is. So you've set me up with him, then you've set me up with this Alexander Philemon, who was... All right, so you've engaged with me, uh, taken on his identity, okay? Fine, you've uh, denied me employment opportunities, fair treatment. Uh, you watched me in this marriage uh, with the individual on the spectrum. You watched me being damaged inside out from all possible angles and perspectives. You've set up the guards to watch. You've set up the cameras inside the house to watch, like, home YouTube videos. You've profited off of it. You've profited off of my struggles and my mental breakdowns and my attempts to call uh, a legitimate psychologist. You've profited off my uh, car accident where you sent an ex-convict to bump into me and to essentially uh, create a fake uh, uh, collision slash car accident. Um, you know, I've explained already in hopes of uh, me taking an MRI or a brain scan of uh, my head uh, to see if I had any anything in there and how uh, where I am ranking on the IQ uh, according to North American standards, okay? So, the extent of damage you've done or the extent of how you've perpetuated my post socioeconomic standing and my um, already suffering health, as I said, I had the tonsils uh, surgery in 93. So my um, organ, uh, one of the immune system organs, is not there, okay? And then, after everything, you are sending me, you are setting me up further to set up my own business in this house, to, with hopes to engage me with some, I don't know, whoever you want to spy on or whoever you want to uh, uh, track, monitor activities of. Who do you think I am? You thought I was some sort of uh, Ukrainian slut coming here with syphilis that was expendable and you can just smear me all across the ground like a mug like that and who you can kill off uh, surreptitiously over the next few years and profit off of it and gain insight information off of it. 